Good evening, Matthew, sir. Ah, good evening, Philip, sir. Nice to see you. <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Banerjee. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, same to you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm good, good, good. How are you? I'm good, sir. Good evening, Mr. Banerjee. Thank you, ma'am. Same to you. Just wait for a minute and then we'll start. Or go? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. We can wait. Actually, we can wait. You can wait for another five minutes, I guess, because uh, people are pouring in. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll start on time. Okay, then. Okay. You can disable the waiting room if you want. Otherwise, you'll have to keep admitting the people. Uh, how to do that, sir? I don't know actually because. Uh, uh, how can I disable the people? Uh, sir, in the, you have a paid version? No, I don't have the paid, paid version actually. Okay, just go to the settings, there will be a waiting room. Okay. And you have to just disable that. Otherwise, you have to keep admitting people, no? Every time. Yeah, and that, that, I, can, that I can guess. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, could you could anyone please help me on this this because I am uh, because I'm the first this is the first time I'm the host of a particular uh, meeting like uh, this because don't know it's very simple uh, I also don't prefer Google Meet that's why <laughs> yeah because uh, I mean Zoom is easier already yeah obviously for forty people have uh, already joined and uh, they they keep coming so. <sighs> Actually, that facility is not in Google Meet. In Zoom, ah. you can make somebody a co-host and, uh, you know, then they can help you. Yeah. But, unfortunately, Google Meet, you'll have to do that yourself. Yes. All right. I'll try to manage uh, the multitasking part, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. I think we can start then. We should respect the time of the people who are joining. Sure, okay. sure, sure, sure. That would be great. Uh, we can start. So it would be nice if you come on camera. Uh, can you see me now? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, always, it's always better to keep your camera on when you're taking a session. <laughs> right, right, right. Can everybody see me, by the way? Uh, uh, yeah. Am I, am I visible yeah. to all of you? Uh, sir, and yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I think, uh, shall we start? Arko, you are ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm good to go. Uh, if, you, if, you ha if you want to record, you can start recording, right? Yeah, it's already recording, sir. Okay. So, good evening uh, to all. On behalf of All India Educators Forum, we are privileged to have Orko Pravo Banerjee with us today. A very young, enthusiastic, dynamic speaker of English, does a lot of training sessions. Uh, he's an assistant master in English uh, in the government of West Bengal. And he's a third generation educator who has teaching experience of undergraduate as well as the secondary levels. Uh, he was selected among the top 120 newly appointed assistant professors in India to be trained at IIT Mumbai back in 2017. And he was the SPOC for IIT Kharagpur for NPTEL, that is the MHRD, uh, Government of India. And he is the center facilitator and resource person for Eastern India. He has multiple academic and creative publications to his credit and has been invited by multiple government and private schools colleges to deliver lectures on communication 
So I happened to come across his, uh, uh, you know, the lecture that he delivered at center, and I was quite impressed. <laughs> so uh, that's how we I met Arko. Uh, so uh, he's an IEL case consultant as well, and he got featured in the Hindu recently last year. And so I welcome you on behalf of AIF. I'm sure it's going to be a great session uh, where we get some valuable tips on speaking skills, especially how to train students. Right. So it's over to you, Arko. Thanks for the session. Thank you for all those kind words, sir. Uh, it's a privilege to be here uh, among all these distinguished uh, teachers and all. And uh, uh, let me let me start on a on a on a note that uh, that is quite alarming, I guess. Uh, back in two thousand nineteen, uh, I was an assistant professor back in back back in those days. I was an assistant professor of English communication with a particular uh, engineering college. And uh, uh, there, uh, there I used to have a convers. There has to have conversations with all my students and all. Uh, uh, please, kindly uh, turn your mics off, please. Uh, it's quite. Uh, uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you so much uh, for adhering to the rules and all that. Now, uh, the, the the point I was making, trying to make, uh, that is uh, two the two years back when I was an assistant professor of English communication back in my back up with Techno India group. Uh, I used to have a lot of you know, uh, conversations with my students and back in the same year, uh, there was a report published by, uh, there was a report published by uh, Aspiring Minds. Okay, uh, they, they, keep, they keep coming here. Uh, and I, I have to, uh, I'm extremely sorry for uh, denying you in the entry, but uh, I cannot uh, allow to join more people on the left join and all that anyway uh, the thing is uh, back in 2019 aspiring minds uh, actually uh, published a report on uh, on, uh, on 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 a basis like employment employment basis and all that and they said that uh, 80 percent of all be and mb me engineers in india were not employable enough for any education sector or knowledge sector which is quite alarming for the fact that uh, there are so many engineering colleges in India all around us and uh, there are lakhs of people, lakhs of students uh, graduating each year probably. So that's quite alarming. So uh, to that, my students would ask uh, questions like, sir, we uh, study eight hours a day. We never miss our coding classes. We go for uh, uh, different tuitions and we uh, we are learning programming languages and Python stuff like that. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly stop us from getting a high pay, highly paid job? To them, my answer would be communication. That's it. Just take take for instance, if one to one communication is important, then let's talk about something like public speaking, right? With with your uh, power or your skill sets to reach out to thousands of people, you can change the world, right? So I guess uh, public speaking skills is something which is uh, pretty neglected nowadays by the students and to a certain extent us, the teachers as well, but it can it can come really handy for any student for their future career and all that. On that note, uh, let me take this opportunity to uh, just give me one minute so that I can start my presentation. and. Uh, just give me a minute. Right. Please give me a yes if you can see all my uh, my my index screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. So uh, again, good evening to all of you, and. Uh, Today, uh, let me just take this opportunity to talk about how to acquire public speaking skills, how to mesmerize the audience and all that. Not that I'm very good at that, but still I'll try my best to do that. Now, uh, I'll ask you four questions first, okay? And make the best use of your in-call message box and answer, if you have the answer, please write those answers one by one. The first question to you would be, to all of you, would be, uh, what is the most endearing, loving, and remarkable thing thing you can think of uh, about your uh, grandparents? The most loving, endearing, and remarkable thing you can think of your grandparents. 
Okay, the answers are coming. Right, the answers are coming. I'll just give you 20 seconds to just uh, wake up from your slumber if you are in uh, one. Uh, right. Okay, stories, caring, nature. I'm getting all those answers. Thank you so much. Right, my next question to you would be, we see commercials all throughout the day, right? Commercials and advertisements on, in, on the internet and on uh, TV sets and all. What is the most striking thing about those successful commercials that we can think of? How do they connect with us, the audience? Through which craft? Please write in the comment box. Which crafts? Uh, emotions, right? Pictures? Words? Visuals, excellent. I'll give you 10 more seconds before I uh, go to, to the next sent, uh, next uh, question, rather. 3D effects, commonality, visual, okay, fine. The third question to you would be, we know about uh, groundbreaking and very famous motivational speakers like uh, Dr. Vivek Vindra or Sandeep Maheshwari or Simon Sinek or uh, Ron Malhotra. What do they have in common? How do they mesmerize us, the audience? How do they uh, convey their feelings to us? How do they persuade us to climb the mountains? Which through witchcraft? Communication skills, convincing power, universal appeal, okay? Speaking skills, power of language, command over language with emotions, great speakers, right? Okay, now last but not the least, if we go to watch a movie with our family members or if we are watching it on our phone on say using uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime. While, while watching a movie, what is the most important factor that decides whether we like the movie or not? What is the most important part you think, the, the most important aspect that you think uh, we love or hate about a particular movie? What is the most important part? Dialogues, script, story, script, dialogues, storyline, value. Right, excellent. Uh, heart touching lines, emotions, actors, messages. Right. I'll get to this later on. Later on. Okay. Uh, on to the next slide now. See, uh, the best of the speakers, they, they they know how to use words, the power of words. They know uh, how to modulate. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I think somebody else is presenting. Uh, who's presenting, by the way? Uh, just remove that uh, Mr. Pradeep Das. Okay. Uh, yeah, please uh, do that accordingly. Is it, is, it, is it fine now? No, no, no. Let me just check with my other device whether it's... Mr. Pradeep Das, can you stop sharing? You yes, can sir. remove that person here. Yeah. You can remove that person from the meeting. Okay. Uh, sorry for the delay and the interruption. But Mr. Mr. Das, I have to remove you. Uh, extremely sorry. His screen is still coming there. I'm getting a lot of requests for joining. Uh, you can admit them. Right. I have just removed Mr. Pradeep Das. No harsh feelings, sir. Uh, nothing personal. No. no. But, <laughs> yeah. They are not supposed to do it. He's right. an old friend of yours trying to sabotage your show. <laughs> Probably, yes. <maybe>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right. And, and My sister, you've always got the last word. <laughs> <laughs> Like you have to be very careful with old friends. <laughs> right. Now, okay, okay. Uh, just a minute. G just give me a minute again. Uh, people are pouring in. I mean. Okay. Now, can you see, see my screen now? Yes. Yes, sir. Now it is fine. Okay, thank, fine, thank you. So, best of the motivational speakers, they uh, speakers like let, let us let us talk about speakers like uh, 
Nelson Mandela or uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, they knew how to use their words and mold their audience according to the way they wanted to. And uh, also the voice and the intent part is also very crucial. Now, uh, let us take, for instance, uh, one particular sentence like, uh, don't do it. Okay. Now, if I say, don't do it, that is one part. Then if I say, don't do it, you can see the difference, right? Or we can say, if I say, uh, don't do it. So I'm getting angrier right so uh basically there's a difference between all 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 the stuffs that i've already showed and uttered right there is a difference and which is quite evident and you can understand that so words and voice uh, going out of the window now now let us talk about the intent part for for the starters you have to understand that uh, one thing that you need to be very clear about what you want to do with your speech right the intention part is very important because whether I want to instruct my subordinates or my juniors or somebody else or whether I want to chide my family members or whether I want to school a naughty friend, uh, I have to be honest about my intention, right? There is one uh, uh, popular belief that there is one rule that 738.55, that is 7% uh, is uh, the words and 38% is uh, the tone of voice and 50% is your body language. But that is fine only until uh, you meet a radio jockey, right? Regarding radio jockeys, you cannot see their body language, okay? So for me, words, voice and intent, these are the three extremely important components for producing speech and communicating effectively. To the next slide. HBR's authentic speaker. Now, HBR stands for Harvard Business Review. Now, uh, back in 2005, Dr. Nick Morgan, who's an expert in this particular field, he published uh, an article uh, where he actually described four uh, very important uh, aspects of a particular uh, of an authentic speaker, like. Intend to be open with your audience, the connect, you want to intend to connect with your audience, intend to be passionate about your topic and intend to listen to your audience. Now, uh, first and foremost, if you are not honest about your thoughts, uh, the audience are clever enough to catch you off guard. Okay, you have to be very clear about uh, your ideas and what you want to convey to your audience. That is first part. The second part is the willingness to connect, right? Uh, you can use stories. I've already discussed rather you people, most of you were with the answer, came with the answer that stories are really important and you can use anecdotes and you can use stories uh, to get in touch with your audience and uh, it's something that they can relate to, right? So that con connection, that emotional connection should be there from the very start. Now, the intent to be passionate about your topic, definitely. And I any idea is worth sharing only if that idea is uh, believed by you, whether you believe that idea in, in that I, you have the faith in that idea or not. If you do not believe that idea yourself, nobody else will for sure. So be very passionate about whatever you do. And when you are asking your student or any speaker to talk about a particular topic, he or she has to be very passionate about what he or she is doing. So passion is probably uh, very important and probably very underrated one. Now intend to listen to your audience. Uh, I get the point that uh, uh, the speaker is the person who's speaking, but it is never a one-way traffic. It is always a two-way traffic. Always try to uh, maintain a good eye contact with your audience. Well, it is not possible online, but at least offline, in person, you can do that, right? Uh, there has to be a two-way traffic at all times. Now, uh, apart from HBR's, these four uh, characteristics, what other characteristics you can think of? of an uh, authentic speaker. Please write in the inbox, in call message box. What are the other characteristics of an authentic speaker? How would you rate a person? On which ground, on which criteria would you would rate a person as an authentic speaker? Please write in the comment box. Apart from these four uh, characteristics, voice modulation, right? Command on topic, have a sense of humor, body language, vocabulary, gestures, excellent, excellent. Right, moving on. 
issues be it writing for your examination or going for your IELTS test I, I've been an IELTS consultant for the past four five years now or attending a, a webinar or attending a, an, a job interview anxiety actually is never good probably it never helps it almost never helps so the per performance anxiety uh, wreaks havoc so be careful about that lack of content and lack of structure they, uh, they go hand in hand simply because if you are anxious if you are not confident about what you are trying to say and what you want to convey to the audience definitely lack of content and lack of structure would play its part because uh, until unless you're sure about the content and the format and structure and organize or the, or the, 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 or the organization of a particular speech you are definitely going to fail your speech is going to fall flat for sure and if you're not sure about your your content and your structure you cannot meet the time management part right uh, there's a reason why best of the speeches right the tech talks they would allow you only 20 minutes to speak on a particular topic right uh, they're the pinnacle of uh, uh, public speaking so that that is one thing that you have to be careful about the feedback part is very important again because uh, until and unless you you get the feedback from your audience like what i am trying to trying to do for the past uh, i've been trying to do for the past uh, 10 15 minutes now i'm trying to get some feedback from you right uh, the profession of or the the work of public speaker and a teacher is uh, like almost same unless we get uh, feedback from our students or from our audience we are going nowhere. We're not sure about what we are doing, what we are trying to achieve, right? So, what other issues you think a public speak public speaker can face during his or her speech? Please write in the comment box. What are the other issues you can think of apart from these five? Please try to uh, be specific about what you write because apart from these five issues, what are the other issues you, th you think uh, people face while going for a public speaking uh, stint? Criticism, Sapna, uh, ma'am, thank you so much. Criticism is there and uh, confidence, rude behavior, right? Okay, anxiety. I, I, I mentioned that. Uh, apart from these five points, what else can you come up with? Not interacting, right? Unable to connect expectations, right? Language barrier is very good point, right? Somebody has to be, if not an expert, at least a good uh, speaker of, a, of this particular target language right uh, thank you so much for your cooperation now moving on since I've already mentioned tech talks uh, it's it I, I'm trying to give a few points regarding tech talks as well because best of the speakers uh, go to tech talks and set the try to stay, set the stage on fire now Chris Anderson who was the uh, co-founder of tech talks he has four points to share regarding tech talks always focus on a major idea ideas make us who we are right no matter how small an idea is uh, I, an idea worth sharing is always uh, a reason enough to communicate with each other right so always focus on, an, on, a, on a major idea that you want to convey to to the audience now give people give people a reason to care obviously that i've already mentioned that always try to uh, get in touch with your audience and try to set up a contact a, a connection with your audience first and unless you do that uh, people would lose their interest for sure building ideas with familiar concepts is very important again public speaking and teaching go hand in hand we as teachers always start from the known to the unknown we go to the unknown right always give your audience something to uh, talk about or think about because until and unless you start with start with a context if you don't give them a context to think upon uh, your public speaking stint is going to fall flat for sure right you won't be able to hold the attention for long avoid promoting yourself or a company we do it a lot right uh, in our it is like our show we are always like it is our show we promote ourselves and all that's fine to a certain extent but uh, people have come to watch uh, not watch you, but they want to get an idea about your uh, ideas rather. They want to listen to your ideas. So idea is the king and not you. That you have to remember. Okay. Uh, 
uh, your company is fine whether you want to uh, whether you are from the best of the best companies it doesn't really matter because uh, people what people care is uh, simply they want to get enriched they would uh, judge you on the basis that whether you have been able to give them something extra or not that's that's what they want that's it stories since we were we started off with the importance of stories and all that i've been getting a lot of texts regarding stories now uh harmenia ibarra and kent lineback they wrote a particular article named uh, what's your story okay uh they said that there are different plots to a story one is the educational plot and one is the, the maturation plot but before that let us talk about the first point that is what is and what could be this was propagated by nancy duart who is an expert in this field now after carefully examining all the successful storytellers uh, nancy duart uh, was of, an, of, of, of the opinion that uh, uh, all the best stories they start with what is what is wrong with the society what is wrong with the world what is wrong with a particular company and how you can change the course right what is and what, what could be what is wrong with the company what is wrong with the world and what could we do together and achieve something greater right so all the stories they have these two parts what is and what could be and then the educational plot i struggled a lot i used to sleep on the floor and uh, i i had nothing to eat uh, a particular at a particular point now i own two cars now i have two houses that is the transition from educational plot to maturation plot people are hooked towards your story right people uh, people are like okay th this is why this is exactly why we are completely uh, taken aback by the stories which would tell us about racks to riches stuffs right you are all we always enjoy that right i had nothing to eat and all now i run three restaurants right so st stories like that then comes continuity causality and coherence okay now uh, these three points are very important uh, the idea you are trying to share it has to have these three points until and unless people can connect with your idea and can see the structure uh, which lies within uh, is very important it's very difficult for them to connect with you right and uh, beginning middle and end uh, going back to aristotle's times aristotle had to believe that he, he in fact wrote rhetorics on this and in his rhetorics he said that uh, every successful story whether written or spoken should have a proper beginning a middle and a fitting end if you follow the structure whether you are writing a story or you are telling a story it is always going to be effective right now since we are talking about uh, public speaking it is almost always evident that uh, the speakers use their ppt presentations right they always go for ppt presentations but it is difficult it is actually very uh, important to remember that uh, always decide on your content first and then try to uh, guess about the numbers number of slides you are going to use right so less slides and more socialize that is the way to go uh, you can use five, six, seven slides and uh, you can continue for an hour. So that is completely up to you. But it is more about you and not the slides. Uh, there are people who would use slides to shield themselves. Slides are there to help you. They are aids, right? They are the helping hand that you want to hold. But they are never the star of the show. You are the star of the show, the, the, the speaker. Content first, slides later, obviously design your content first, have it, uh, have it jotted down first and then decide on the number of slides. Keep it simple. No matter wh what you do in your life, always the mantra is to keep it simple. Nobody is asking you to do graphic designing with your PPT slides, right? Uh, always try to keep it simple and uh, focus on the presenter and not PPTs. Always. The presenter is the star of the show. And the content is not the PPTs. PPTs are there only to help, help the presenter and the people who are in attendance. That's it. Well, uh, I've done a bit of uh, public speaking myself, and uh, I've been to different schools and colleges. Uh, these are the six points, six Ks that I think uh, can come handy for anyone who's trying to do uh, 
some some sort of public speaking or presentation always know your audience right where they are coming from what their age group is and all because until unless you know your audience you can never target uh, how to uh, get them uh, on your side so knowing your audience is the key know your systems always always uh, test your uh, peripherals your laptop mobile and stuff like that your medium and all then uh, always uh, be careful about what you say because uh, like throwing a few jokes here and there is fine it it actually blends in quite well with your content if it if it if, if it is that if it's that case uh, then it is fine but in that case uh, it is quite acceptable but the thing is what is funny to you cannot be funny to everyone else okay uh, so stop taking a jive at, jive at people and different communities. So always be careful about your humor. Know your data. It's very important. I've seen hundreds of presentations. I have seen those uh, in person and during webinars and seminars, stuff like that. Uh, it is very important that you tell the source of your data or your, or your uh, information and uh, your, your facts and figures because it goes a long way to establish your accountability right uh, people can have faith in you people can believe uh, you and what you are saying so it goes a long way to establish your uh, like reputation as someone who's authentic right know the mood of your audience for sure if you follow their mood uh, if you if you if you keep an eye open, keep your eyes open and if you if you can maintain some uh, amount of eye contact with them you can always know their mood it's not that difficult the most important part is know yourself it's very important because i being the presenter i know myself the best my strengths and my weaknesses are known to myself only so play according to the rules and play by that simple now before wrapping up uh it's very important that i give a few uh like concluding statements and all that not that it is the last slide of my my webinar but uh, context framing reputation and question try to follow the this pattern okay give your audience a context to get in touch with uh, you and uh, give them a context so that they can uh, connect with your presentation connect with your uh, uh, topic then frame it in a way that that is quite uh, understandable okay begin it should have a proper beginning middle and end repeat in threes management gurus different management gurus gurus were, would tell you that always repeat in threes because it, until unless you repeat uh, the, the, the 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 crux of the matter is not going to stay with the audience so repeat your points again and again ask your ask questions to your audience open ended questions not the other not, not, not the other ones always ask uh, open-ended questions it helps it goes a long way uh, because questioning is, questioning is power question is an art and uh, that can be used to good effect power of silence we talk a lot about presenting and uh, uh, public public speaking and stuff like that but power of silence is golden right? silence is golden as you all know and best of the speakers, they use pause to the best effect, right? Which is why they are the best speakers, right? Feedback again, I'm repeating myself, always go for feedback, always go for feedback. It helps you, the speaker, to get better at your craft. And at the same time, the, the audience would feel that uh, they are not ne being neglected, right? Call to action, go and subscribe to my channel go and buy my product do it right now these are the call to action always end your presentation with a call to action all right this is how marketing companies work they would ask you to go and fetch that particular brand of fragrance uh, and stuff like that so always go for call to action well uh practice makes people perfect and if not perfect at least better 
these are the th nine activities that I ask my students to do, my clients to do rather, uh, in no particular order, by the way, you can do it. Uh, all, all, all these activities are standalone part. Uh, so we can do that. Now, starting with DND, uh, it stands for description, nostalgia, dreams. Okay. Uh, description in the description part, I would ask my students to simply uh, describe a particular piece of furniture that would give them enough practice on present tense. The N stands for nostalgia. I would ask them to talk about something which happened last year or maybe in his, his or her childhood. That is for uh, past tense. And D N D. The D, the last D, uh, stands for dreams. Okay. I would ask my students to talk about what their dreams are, what their mottos are, and right? what do what do they want to achieve in their life. So D N D stands for description, nostalgia, dreams. This particular activity gives them enough practice on all those three tenses. Okay. Now, cornered is something I, I, I would ask my students, four of my students to go to each and every corner of a particular room. This is strictly possible only if you are doing it in the classroom and not uh, or online. Okay. I would ask them to go to each corner of the classroom and they I would, I would ask them to start have a conversation with each other, interacting with each other and all they would start doing that. Uh, that gives them enough confidence to talk louder and ex be more expressive. EOTO stands for uh, each one teach one or each one teach everyone. As teachers, we all know that uh, for a teacher to be good at his or her art, he or she has to be a subject expert first and then has, has to be pretty good with their communication skills as well. So by asking my students to teach each other, I would give them enough practice on uh, delivering a particular lesson or session at the same time. Now, DND corner, DOTO, this is something which I practice exclusively because uh, these are the part and parcel of uh, parcel of activities which I published last year last year with uh, LTI. I had a paper, academic paper with LTI, English Language Teaching Association of India, where they published my paper back in September, October 2020. So uh, uh, I, this, this, these are the three things, three activities which I do uh, a lot. You can go and check your uh, uh, September, October 2020 uh, edition of LTI, uh, LTI backed uh, JELT that, that is. Now interview, as you all know that mock interview part is very important, uh, nothing to share much about one the, the interview part. We all do that. We all ask our students to go, uh, go for mock interviews and all that. The SMART stands for sell me a random thing. That is my version of sell me a pen. Okay. So you know the rest. Artifact is something which is uh, which I do both online and offline. I would ask my students to go and fetch something from their house and I would ask them to demonstrate that particular artifact so that so that uh, actually gives them enough practice on uh, demonstrations and all. So that would prepare them for their next public speaking stint. Story continuation is something which uh, I'm sure you people do a lot. I would ask them, I'll, I'll, I'll give my students the first few lines or the last concluding lines uh, of a particular story and they have to develop on those lines and story continuation works in that way. Breathing exercises help a lot and uh, it, it helps you to focus it helps you to concentrate and at the same time you know the power of silence you know the power of pause all right mirroring is something which we have been doing since ages i would ask the student to uh, stand in front of the mirror and practice that's it practice practice and practice that is what they that's what they can do now, uh, bonus tips. I know this is this is uh, this was supposed to be something uh, a, a webinar on public speaking skills, but again, uh, it is very important that the students know what an elevator pitch is. Okay, elevator pitch is something which uh, which is like twenty or thirty second long uh, self bragging. Okay, I've done this, I've done that, and all that. It helps them to summarize their career. Okay, they would grow up and they would do a lot of good things and until unless you have a perfect elevator pitch you are lagging behind you will lag behind in this competitive market uh, he, uh on this account i would uh, i can tell you that uh, just a few days back i met one of my uh, friends online uh, and he he is from uh, apple california he works there as an engineer senior engineer 
he told me that orko uh, just because i had my elevator pitch ready back then i could actually fix one interview with apple california right with my my elevator pitch was so good for them that they actually arranged one uh, interview ses session with me so that's how i got my job so elevator pitch is very important the intro video uh, even the linkedin as we all know it has started to do uh, inter intro videos uh, and they would ask you to uh, replace your present display picture with uh, an inter 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 intro video uh, lasting like 20 to 30 seconds so that is what uh, your students can do again and that would uh, be definitely helpful for them to uh, diminish their stage fright or camera fear okay uh, bios are always helpful uh, whether you are writing uh, stories or you are writing uh, academic papers bios all always help you to summarize your career in short okay and uh, if you are good at writing bios then definitely you will be good at writing scripts for your public speaking event okay so that's what i have to say, uh, say. now best of the speakers they are the givers and not the takers which is why i am leaving you with these four books you can you can uh, Take a picture of these books you can go and suggest these books to your students as well i am on linkedin you can get in touch with me on linkedin we can share a lot of stuffs we can interact with each other regarding schools and colleges i i would love to know about you and your career in your school and college and i have my own youtube channel as well i've been running that for the past four years now and uh, though i'm not really active on youtube but again you know the rest right uh, so uh, thank you so much for being there and uh, over to you, Matthew, sir. And uh, thank you so much for being such patient audience. Uh, so I have one question, if you don't mind. Sure. So if you could elaborate a bit on this uh, elevator pitch, I mean, how do we explain that to students in class? I see we're all English teachers. I mean, a lot of us are here, Ranjana Ma'am right. and Jyoti Jain. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've not really had like a you know a corporate kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, elevator pitch is something I'm not very clear. I mean, how do I explain that to my students? Very interesting. But if you could just give some tips. So ask them, for for starters, ask them to uh, say good things about them, right? Just tell. Suppose. Uh, let me consider you as a student if you don't mind then if you are my Absolutely. student i would ask you to uh say i think you, you're sudita ma'am uh i guess yes yes yeah, sudita, sudita, yeah. Sudita, okay sudita do, do one thing tell me only good things about yourself the, only the positive all parts. right only the positive oh you parts. want me to you want to you want me to speak right now yeah please please yeah do that. okay sure okay uh i'm a foodie and uh i'm a fantastic uh public speaker I am a passionate educator and a teacher, and I love to sing. I am into performing arts. Yeah, that's quite a bit actually. Excellent. Fine. Now, uh, on some other day, I would ask you to talk about the negative aspects of yourself. Ah, so I uh, tend to overthink a lot, and uh, because I need to multitask, so I get stressed. So that's the you know the con part of uh, having all these skills all right on the third day i would ask you to talk about me and what you have uh, what you have to say about me as a teacher all right so i think you've taught us very well and i would like to incorporate all things that you've taught us in class and uh, i'm sure i'd be able to use uh, these uh, tick, uh, you know tricks of the trade in my uh, own sessions and own classrooms Excellent. Now on the fourth day, I would ask you to do yourself a favor and combine each and everything that you have said and say it in 10 sentences. Okay. So I am a passionate educator, but I do get stressed at times. And uh, I think Mr. Banerjee did a fantastic job today. That's your elevator pitch. Both combining yours okay. and mine. <laughs> Okay, that, that really uh, makes things very clear. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, please, I would love to get questions from your side. Please. Yeah. Hi, sir. Hi. 
I have a thing that uh, whenever I speak, I speak so fast that the person who is in front of me, they didn't get it, but I'm saying to him. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, what's your mother tongue, please? Uh, uh Hindi. Hindi. Uh, are you a very fast speaker in Hindi as well? Yes. If I have a uh, lots of thoughts in my mind, then my word of speed or the speed of my language they go so fast that the person they have to speak out. You will you please pardon? Then they have. Then I have to again speak out, and then, and most okay. of the time students are not be able to say that, ma'am, please pardon, because they think I am the only one that who is not getting it. Right. But I know there right. may be some problem. Uh, that that's a problem which uh, is common in genius people. By the way, <laughs> their thoughts are so Thank fast. You so much for <laughs> right. Exactly. Now, to 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 this as a solution to your problem. Uh, see, I myself is a pretty fast speaker. That I'm sure you know by now. But but the problem is, uh, it is not it, it is not uh, advisable to anyone of you that you. If 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 you are uh, just just to show off your skills to uh, like language skills, if you are a very good speaker and all that, see see uh, the main purpose of speaking is to communicate. Okay, if my if I cannot send my thoughts across the bridge, there is no use of uh, my my speaking skills and all that. So I think it is better for you that you try and slow it down a bit. One by one, like one day at at a time, and I'm sure if you try to work on your speed, definitely you are going to work on it. If you work on it uh, honestly, it will it should take three to four months, not more than that. Why do I judge that? Yes, uh, I am now my the pace of speak uh, speaking is slower down. Uh, always ask the person who is on the other side of your phone call, because the person who is uh, listening to you. Cannot see your face and your body language. The only bit of reference they have is your voice, right? So if they can understand your everything what you are speaking, then I'm sure you have done remarkably well. But problem comes when there is a one-to-one -one conversation, not the phone call conversation. Now I get that, but the thing is, uh, since you are speaking, you are you're telling me that uh, this is your general tendency of speaking very fast. I'm sure yes. it is. It is the same with. Uh, you being on the phone call as well right so no try... no the people say that when they are talking to me on phone that my voice is so calm and they are okay. understanding whatever i'm speaking to them but okay. when it comes to the in front of them then they say ki please slow down your voice or slow down your pace we get some time to you to digest <laughs> okay then start uh, charity begins at home start with your own family members okay just ask them to follow your development uh, week by week month by month and i think you can do a great job of your uh, speaking skills i'm sure but because it is very difficult for me to uh, understand because i don't even know you and i i am sure you get it right and uh, i need to follow you because i have already mentioned that i myself is a very fast speaker but at least if if i am to be believed i am quite audible and you can understand what i am trying to say and i i've been uh, uh, expressive enough so my only suggestion to you would be start with your family members ask them to follow your growth and that should do okay and one more thing to how to overcome the fear of the public speaking <laughs> start with start with your i'm sure you have a mirror at your place i have a better Uh, yeah right right i uh, so always see the problem is uh, the fear is there only because you don't do it right in fact i would tell you something each time i attend these webinars and being a resource person or speaker or facilitator uh, there are only 30 40 people here uh, last month i did a session with center there were two and a half thousand teachers okay so i was okay. so anxious about that particular uh, webinar that i was almost like uh, i was about to be like okay fine i was completely bogged down right but the moment it started that when you are when you are going into that event something kicks in and i'm sure you will do better with your speaking like that always go for practice if you practice if you go for talk shows like if you if you arrange public speaking events if you uh, present to people in front of you for the for the third or fourth time i'm sure you'll see the development 
ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू एक्सक्यूज मी सर कैन आई आस्क यू क्वेश्चन प्लीज या आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क यू राइट नाउ यू टोल्ड अबाउट लाइक स्पीकिंग इनोटेशन एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स आर्टिकुलेशन इन ऑल uh but there must be few questions which the students should emphasize when they go for these competitions as they have group discussions and all can you suggest a few questions on which they should focus uh for them to have answers in their mind while speaking so that like you know uh, in this tough competitive world uh, they can be there addressed or you know noticed among the uh, crowd I would not suggest your students to mug up answers first. Oh, definitely, that, that, it's that, not about mugging up the answers, but it means they can focus on certain uh, aspects. Like right now, uh, you talked about positive and negative uh, aspects of the personality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, if there could be certain areas wherein they can have a proper language for themselves, so that they are prepared I and mean, it's prepared beforehand, right? uh while going for these discussions especially at college level or at uh, you know job level mm -hmm. or at uh competition level mm -hmm. or as you talked about your friend uh in the apple company right like. yeah right right okay okay see uh, the point is you have to be absolutely sure about what you want i have already mentioned that throughout my uh presentation uh if you are if you have an idea the best way to deal with any question is you are pretty much clear about what you want and what you have to show right that's the best way to go and if you're talking about kids uh, who are like uh, who are the students of class 8 9 10 maybe they're not too sure about what they want and uh, they're not sure about the the topics as well general questions would do because since they are very uh, very uh, like immature and they are they're young so i'm sure they are not going to face challenging questions like the i mean uh, the, the people are still joining i don't know this was an event uh, it was supposed to start at 6 right so uh, as i was uh, speaking to you on uh, what are the what are the questions that you can prepare them on a uh, basic questions like the if uh, definitely if you are giving me a topic that would be the best way to uh, that the best way for me to explain things but say, take for instance uh, that this particular topic that why public speaking is important for school students suppose let us take this topic now i would as a teacher i would ask uh, my students to prepare on questions like uh, what is public speaking and uh, whether uh, the people who are trying to sell uh, aqua guards and uh, sims uh, on the streets whether they are doing some public speaking or not if that is public speaking these are basic questions uh, or uh, the hawker who we see every day on the train uh, whether they are doing public speaking or not and uh, how to become a better version of yourself as a public speaker these are the few questions that you can always expect uh, people to ask to those students so you can prepare these uh, uh, those students on these questions okay thank you sir thank you I'm ready to take more questions please We still have around 5 6 minutes I guess uh, so we can take another one or two questions uh, before we wrap up Oh by the way uh, for those who have not uh, noticed the the fact I've already sent you the link for registration or the certificate please find it in the in call message box yes i received the certificate thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you any more questions uh before i wrap this up and i would ask uh, matthew sir to uh, come up with some concluding words he is not there in the meet he is not there in the meet that's surprising <laughs> uh okay then uh if you are happy and satisfied with the with, with this particular presentation then i would like to take your leave uh thank you so much for being there and uh, dropping by for the first time uh, because i this is my first collaboration with aief i have been doing uh, uh, webinars for some different organizations and uh, thank you so much if 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 you have found it uh useful enough good enough I would definitely like to 
come back uh, for another one or two sessions. Thank you so much. Uh, Somebody is asking me to send the link again. I'll do that and then I'll take your leave. Okay. Uh, I've just given you the link. Please find it. Uh, Sumit Patel, uh, Sumit Patel, sir, I have given you the link. Thank you so much. I'll take your leave now. Uh, then for now, thank you so much again and good evening to all of you and good night as well because uh, it's almost seven. Uh, thank you so much, Mapul Sinha. And uh, until next time, bye bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>